You've been fighting the Harkonnens for decades. Luke! My family's been fighting them for centuries. Your blood comes from dukes and great houses. Here, we're equal. What we do, we do for the benefit of all. Now, that was a clip from Dune Part 2, starring Zendaya, Austin Butler, and Timothy Chalamet. Joining me now for more on this is our film critic, Richard Krauss. And I was told by Jared, our producer, that it's important that I say Dune Part 2, not Dune 2. Well, exactly. It's because very this important. isn't a, a reboot. It's not a sequel. It's a continuation. So the first film of Denis Villeneuve's uh, adaptation of this very complicated novel by Frank Herbert came out in 2001. And if you'll think back, theaters were only open intermittently. The pandemic was raging. Uh, so this movie was relegated to the small screen, which didn't really do it justice because of the epic nature of it. Uh, but it's also the film that sets up the story. It sets up the trade wars. It sets up the planet on which it uh, happens. It sets up the the tale of revenge. Everything in that film is leading to part two. So I think if you haven't seen part one, you should probably check it out before going to see Dune part two in the theaters uh, where it's playing exclusively. But this is the payoff for all the setup in the first film. The two hours and 45 minutes of Dune part two uh, absolutely delivers this big epic vision from Canadian director Denis Villeneuve uh, of the aftermath of part one. So you have the tale of revenge. You've got Timothy Chalamet as maybe a reluctant messiah type. You have Zendaya in here and Christopher Walken and Austin Butler and Francis Pugh and Charlotte Rampling <laughs> and Harvey <laughs> Bardem. I mean, it is just a stacked cast of millennial superstars and A-listers that really delivers uh, what I am calling extreme blockbuster filmmaking. Uh, see this as big and as loud as you can. It's so immersive. All these desert warfare scenes, mm -hmm. you'll feel like you have sand in your underpants by the time the end credits roll. <laughs> I'm surprised. <laughs> I'm surprised theaters actually aren't kind of doing a double bill with it and offering people the chance to see both at the same time. Well, they're both really long. That's the that's. Have you seen some of the movies there. lately? Yeah, well, you know I have. But uh, that would be about a six-hour time commitment, and uh, you want to get as many people kind of in and out and in and out. I think Dune Part 1 is probably on Blu-ray by now. I think they're counting on people uh, checking it out that way. But I gave Dune Part 2 four out of five stars, and uh, it's worth a look, particularly uh, if you've seen the first one. All right. Did you just say Blu-ray? Yes, I did. <laughs> Okay, let's move on to Space Does Man. Does that sound old-fashioned now? <laughs> a little bit. All right, let's move on to Space Man with Adam Sandler. <laughs> yeah, this is on Netflix now. You won't find this one on Blu-ray. Uh, this is on Netflix, uh, and it is the story of an astronaut in space on his way to Jupiter to do some scientific studies up there. He'll be gone for about a year. We meet him about halfway through. And uh, his wife on Earth, Carrie Mulligan, is pregnant and is uh, kind of over the idea that he's gone all the time. She wants a divorce. The mission control does not tell him that, but they just simply cut off all communication with her. And he can't understand why she's not getting in touch, what's happening on Earth. And he starts to feel more alone than he may have otherwise. Uh, and, and he either starts to hallucinate or is visited by a creature from outer space in the form of a giant spider. Eight legs, six eyes, voiced by Paul Dano, who gives him relationship advice. And I know this sounds like the setup to an Adam Sandler comedy, but this is not. This is played deadly straight. Uh, this is Adam Sandler doing pretty good dramatic work, mm -hmm. uh, mostly all by himself opposite this giant spider. Uh, but the movie gets a little sluggish in the middle, although the ending is kind of metaphysical, kind of beautiful. It's a pretty good payoff, but it's a bit of a slog to get through in the middle part. So I gave it two and a half out of five stars, and it's on Netflix right now. All right, I want to get to this last one. Uh, 500 Days in the Wild. It sounds, mm -hmm. it sounds really interesting. 
Yeah. So Dion Whalen is a British Columbia filmmaker and cinematographer. And in 2015, she was feeling kind of disillusioned with the world. So she decided that she was going to get away from it all and uh, do the entire Trans Canada Trail. It's the longest trail in the world and it connects the Atlantic, Arctic, and Pacific Oceans. And it's 24,000 kilometers. Wow. And this isn't planes, trains, and automobiles. This is hiking, biking, paddling, snowshoeing, and skiing. Uh, no electric or gas-powered uh, vehicles of any sort. She's the first person to do the entire trail that way. It took her six years. This is the document of that. And it's a beautiful uh, looking film about uh, places in this country that we we'll, most of us will probably never see. All but right. what I really have, liked about this... And I have to get you to wrap up because we're almost out of time. Three and a half out of five stars. <laughs> it's her personal journey that is the, the best part of this. All right, I'm looking forward to seeing it. Richard, thank you as always. Right. Cheers. Thanks, Roger. Richard Krause is our film critic.